How are you? How's everybody? I don't know. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Kelly. I'm doing well. Someone just realized that we have a male coach and I got really excited. There's a lot. Oh, of they that. didn't. They didn't know. <laughs> she knew the husband didn't really he was like wait who and she's like oh that's who <laughs> uh, that's funny. So I, well yay a lot of bookkeepers are roping their husbands into this <laughs> that's awesome so they're having fun so. awesome 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 Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Debbie. How are y'all? Good morning. Is anyone up to anything exciting this week? We're waiting for people to join in their business or life in general. My daughter just flew in for graduation tomorrow. Excellent. Yay. Um. I graduated from GCU. Oh, no problem, Kelly. What'd you say, Sherry? I'm sorry. I graduated from GCU in 2015. Oh, the purple. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's exciting. Everybody's nervous. So I have a silly question. I've never been to a university graduation. Can you be redneck there? Or do you have to be all prim and proper? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it depends on the university. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a private Christian university, so I'm thinking yes on the red net. Yeah, I think you can, you can do whatever you want. Do. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're good. There's too many people. If you are watching on Facebook, hop on um, Zoom with us and so we can chat. So when's the graduation, Debbie? Um, Tomorrow night at seven. Graduation, Debbie. Um, awesome. Tomorrow night at seven. Graduation, Debbie. Um, awesome. Somebody's echoing, so I'm muting everybody. I apologize. No. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but I had I feedback. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. and then I heard it again. I was like, oh, that's not that good. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Anybody have any wins from this past week? And wins do not have to be that you signed a client. They can be you got all of your clients done or you posted to Facebook and you haven't been or um celebrate every little win for sure i got my large client uh checking account reconciled for 2022 for cleanup work so that was Yay. an accomplishment <laughs> most definitely awesome
anybody else, if y'all are watching on Facebook, free, feel free to either hop on or drop it in the chat. We're watching Facebook as well there. So we'll see what y'all post. Hopefully, as long as Facebook's not crazy. I have it up to if we need to, but okay. So we just finished tax season. Um, well, actually, real quick, let's do a check in. How does everyone feel about having finished tax season? Um, are you feeling relieved? Are you feeling like, oh my gosh, I never want to do that again? Are you like, game on? I'm going to conquer this next year. I didn't feel either way with tax season. I didn't, I mean, I had an influx of clients, but everyone did extensions. So it was more of, I don't know if business owners just don't wanna pay taxes the first quarter of the year. So they'd rather just wait and file an extension. Um, but every single one of my clients filed an extension. So now I feel like now there's more stress than there was at tax time on my <laughs> end. <laughs> you have a little bit more leeway right now. Like it's not like, yeah. hey, I have to have it done tomorrow is the only thing, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So I know that I see the deadline coming. It seems like there's a little bit more time since, you know, most of these clients I gained in the last couple months. So awesome. Well, congratulations. Thanks. So I think we wanted to talk about, um, I've been asked a couple of times this week, um, kind of about like, and it's not necessarily with, with tax season being over, but looking now to the rest of the year, how do I hit these income goals? Um, are these goals that I have, how do I get more clients um, or how do I bring on contractors to manage the work? Um, so Megan asked, what are we talking about today? And I was like, why don't we talk about just that? Like, what, how do we start to like um, put together this jigsaw puzzle that is our ideal business um, and not even maybe even our ideal business, but I think, yeah, the ideal business, like, what do we want it to look like? Um, and how do we not let it get derailed? I think one of the downsides of having a group like moms is you see everyone else say, I got an eight, you know, maybe you're seeing someone say, I got a $25,000 cleanup. I got a $12,000 cleanup. I got a $2,000 a month client. I got a $600 a month client. And it starts to feel like, man, I'm not signing clients like that. Man, I'm not signing them at the frequency of this person. Man, this person just took on 50 clients from a CPA firm. I want look like that. And yet, if, if your goal is only to work 10 hours a week and you don't want 50 clients, why are we sad by that? <laughs> right? Like, or we start feeling like, okay, I got to go market more, market more. And we do, and we start getting clients and our goal is only to work 10 hours a week. And now we're working 40 or 50 or 60. And that was never our goal. And so we let these perceptions of what we should be doing, drive our actions, drive what we, what we were doing versus letting our plan, letting our jigsaw our, our, our desire for the business drive the actions we take. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to focus on today was us being in the driver's seat, not letting other people's opinions or um, just the distraction of what should might be good, um, better or best, like us choosing our own best, um, be the focus and, and not not get distracted um and I think there's a lot of things that can distract us courses can distract us um the it, I don't know about you guys but right now on my Facebook feed if I were to go like pull up all of the sponsored posts it's download this excel sheet download this excel sheet download this dashboard um 
because I was doing some research on a dashboard for something we were working on. And I'm like, everyone is selling a dash, everyone's selling a sell sheet or something. And I'm like, but you could be so distracted by that and totally ignore client work, totally ignore marketing um, because there's no goal behind what you're looking for, no goal behind. Um, cause, cause if the, if the result is, well, I just need a dashboard, any dashboard will do because I need this information. Do you really need the perfect dashboard? No. And in, in that sense, right? right? Like, do I need the perfect resource? No, I just need something that's going to solve the problem to move me to the next step. And that's not to say, um, that we want to be so narrow focused that we're not thinking 10 steps ahead to, okay, so if we implement this policy or procedure, how does that affect the clients six months from now? If I do it this way, how do I price increase later? Like we, we do want to be looking ahead, but I don't think we want to be looking for this perfect system. Someone's going to solve all my problems for me type system. Um, and Megan, you deal with mindset around that a lot. What it what are you what are you encountering with that specifically? Like distractions in your own. Well, I mean, the I shared a video with the uh, I don't know if I shared it in here, but the other group, um, and you and I talked a little bit about it yesterday, I wanna say, um, by Eric Thomas. And one of the things in there that he always said or that he said mentioned was like we always think, oh, I need to go get another book or I need to buy another course and all that when it's actually, no, you just need to believe in yourself and like what you're, what you're offering your clients and all the things. So I think like that kind of plays into even that, like it, it goes back to like, hey, it's a fear of, do I know how to do this? Or what if I get these clients that I don't know how to handle the work or whatever? So you put it off on all these different things spreadsheets what if this client thinks I'm unprofessional because I sent them an email versus sent this in this sent an email of a quote instead of a fancy proposal document you know like little stuff like that we get um people get hung up on all the time for sure yeah. um yeah accounting firms don't really send proposals they send engagement letters like <laughs> um I had a CPA be like wait what's a proposal? What do you mean by a proposal? And I was saying proposal because of Upwork, you send out proposal, like Upwork calls right. it proposals, like the initial conversation type thing. Yeah. Um, that's not actually what I do. I'm like, that's just unique to Upwork. Um, and it, so it just made me laugh, like some of the things that aren't like industry standards, but they're coaching standards that we 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 think we need to adopt in the bookkeeping business or I think it can go the other way too we think we can adopt coaching tactics in our bookkeeping business that allow us to differentiate and actually enjoy the business so um, I, I think we attract there's two different bookkeepers there's the bookkeeper who wants to just do the kind of daddy entry work and get you the reports and get you on your way there's the other bookkeeper who really loves, because women, I, I think this is very natural to some of the women um, who are administratively talented. And they're like, but you're way overspending on employees. You're way overspending on this. I know this because I just see it. Um, and they're really actually skilled in this um, ability to do cash flow work. Um, and just caveat, I don't mean CFO level work. I just mean cash flow, like really getting into the numbers and saying what are, what's going on with their numbers. Um, and you can turn that into like some coaching that you do um, and really enjoy your business. But you don't have to do that just because someone else is doing it. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, sure, you and I talk about this all the time, but like we, it is easy to get Oh, like this person grew this big business or whatever, but like, why did you start your business? I struggle with that a lot because it's like, oh, the reason I initially started was to spend more time with my daughter or to take her on all these trips and stuff. It wasn't because I wanted a million dollar business or whatever the case is. Some people got into it because that's what they wanted, but that's not what everybody did. Why everybody did, you know? So there's been a lot of times where I've had to 
remind myself of that, you know, like, hey, this is why I started. So it's like time to go back to simplifying how much time I'm spending in my business, I guess. Yeah. And, and paying attention to like, well, if, if that's, if that's your goal, just to someone in general, right. My goal is to do this. My goal is to replace my income or hit this income target or whatever, take home. So I'm going to have to do this to cover my business expenses or whatever. And, and, and I'm going to run the business this way, but to do that under whatever re- requirements I've given myself, maybe you've given yourself 40 hours a week. Maybe you're like, I've got all the time in the world right now and I want to do it this way, but I hate doing this. Like I, I, I don't want to do this or I need to come up with, I I don't want to spend 20 hours of that week in networking groups or on Facebook. Like I I need to get really focused on how I'm working in it so I can work (laughs) for 30 hours a week because I don't want to talk to people, whatever it is. Right. Um, being being focused on that and identifying and I think it's just a good opportunity to do a reset if you found yourself now doing something you didn't you never wanted to be doing because at any point in time you can let clients go you can say I no longer offer this service we're discontinuing this um, service offering with our firm we're bringing out a new service offering firm with the firm that you might be a better fit for would you like to have a conversation about it right and and there's a lot of different ways that you can conquer those but sometimes it does take a second pair of eyes of saying yeah that makes sense here's how to do it okay this is what could happen this is what could go wrong are you okay with that right anytime you do a price increase you can have clients leave right but that also means the clients that accept might replace those clients that leave. And so you're washed, you're, you're even, and you've got more time to go market or bring on a new client, or maybe that's what you needed to do anyway. And you had your life back. Um, and you got rid of the clients that just treat you like um, a data entry. Like not to say that data entry people are bottom like feeders. I'm not saying that, but like treat you as if that's the case. Like, that's what I mean. Um, Because I always need someone to enter stuff into a spreadsheet for me. (laughs) And I love it. Um, I have someone working on a dashboard right now. I'm so thankful for them. It's not even funny. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to see these numbers. (laughs) Like, um, so I get really excited about some stuff like that. So um, is anyone on the call today? dealing with any of that where their business has shifted maybe to a degree that they didn't want it to go? Sure. This spoke to me today because I just had a conversation with my husband about where I want to see my business go. Do, am I happy with working 30 hours a week? Do I want to see it grow to where I'm putting in more hours or, and I'm hiring contractors Do I want to work my butt off so he can leave his job? Um, So it's kind of, you know, sitting down and figuring out what exactly where I want to see this go in the next two to three years. Um, But it's really hard to figure that out because like you said, there's so many options and all these people are reaching out. You can offer this service and that service. And, you know, so it's really defining what services you want to offer. Um, You know, I think this is month eight for me, and I'm really just not sure where I want to see it go. Um, And it's really hard trying to define what's important. You know, like Megan said, you know, we get into this for one reason or another. um, And sometimes when you lose sight of that, you know, and is it okay to just be happy with where you're at and grow at a later point? Um, or, you know, everything is about grow, grow, grow now. And sometimes I have to sit back and wonder if that's really what I want to do. But it's also have to sit down and define where I want to go. Um, and I think that's, you know, once you get past the initial, I got a couple of clients, I'm doing good, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable. Now it's like, okay, now where do we, where we go from here? And I think that's a big struggle 
that I'm currently dealing with just in this last month. I'm trying to figure out where to go, where to, you know, am I, I guess what my goals are, not only financially, but personally. And, you know, it's just very tough. It, kind of iron that out, you know, I'm not worried about everybody else. I'm not, that's not my personality, right. but, um, you know, everyone's like, oh, you can make extra money by doing X, Y, and Z, but okay. How much time is it going to take away from everything else to do that X, Y, and Z? So, um, you know, so I will say this as far as like the X, Y, Z, cause yes, we get I bought a tax course because I was like, oh, I can do taxes and now I'm going to get all these extra clients. And I started doing the tax course and was like, nope, I'm not doing this. This is not something I want to do. You can have a successful business and just do bookkeeping. You don't have to have add-on services. I have a successful business and do not do anything outside of bookkeeping services. That's it. Um, and you can grow it more and more because some people are looking for just those services. Some people don't like the same person doing their taxes that's doing their bookkeeping or doing their CFO services or whatever the case may be. Um, but I think it sounds like you definitely need to take, spend some time and sit down and really think about what you want. And what, another thing that I've realized over the last four years is it's okay if that changes too. Like if that's, if you start it because you just want a little bit of extra money, but now you're like, Hey, this can do more. I can retire my husband we can travel we can you know like all those things that's okay too and maybe it's sit down with him and y'all have that conversation and talk about like what would you like to see in the next five years what would you like to see in the next three years what would you like to see happen over this next year but I think breaking it down like that will be helpful because you can kind of see like in the like what are you looking at not like way in the future but a little more distance so you can kind of start doing some things to slowly make your way that to that point, you know, and whatever that would look like for you. And just to add on to that, Megan, um, is because it can be really hard to be like, well, what do I want for this business? I feel like it could be so many different things, right? So it could be full-time. I really struggled with this because I just wanted, actually full disclosure, I did not want a business. I didn't, I really did not. I, guys, I promise you, I'm not lying. I did not want a business. Uh, I was a stay-at-home mom. I just left the corporate world. I was plenty busy. I had a, like a 15 month old and a two month old. Like I was fine. They're 13 months apart. I was not bored, not bored at all. <laughs> but my husband wanted to start a business. So I started my business as an experiment. I was like, well, let's just see if this platform called Upwork works. It does work if you're curious, um, but it did work. And then it was like, okay, great. Okay, great. I'm now making 30,000 working like one weekend a month. Great. And it like involved into, oh, now this is our gateway to like moving back to family. And it quickly became really more than what I wanted it to be because we wound up having to like 4X the business to move. Um, but the goals changed around it, whether I wanted them to or not, but like the goals changed, the need behind it changed, the desire for it changed because we did just that, Megan. We wrote down our five-year plan. We wrote down our 10-year plan. And we found that we achieved that five-year plan in six months. We thought it was a five-year plan. It really was like buy a house, grow, like it really was. It felt like a five-year plan. We did it in six months because we got really laser focused and we were a united front. You could do that. Um, but that doesn't mean now that we're looking at it, right? That that should be what it does forever. And, and I, I don't think that because we quadrupled the business that it has to be like, okay, keep all of these clients, like, okay, now I think we're ready for another shift in the business. And so what I actually did with my husband this weekend was I said, what are our goals for our family? And we literally write down, wrote down, what are, what are our priorities? What do we hold dear and want to be like core? Like, let's just remind ourselves what our core values are and go from there. And we literally said, here's, here's what we want to accomplish with our kids and our family. 
here's some guiding principles we want to make sure are focused activities. With that, that means we're going to do X, Y, Z. If we're going to do X, Y, Z, what does that mean for our time? And what does that mean for our energy? So when we're, if I'm answering calls or dealing with client fires, like, do I have to be the one dealing with that? Or is it time to hire someone to do this other role? Um, and just structuring it around, here's our core values. Here's our core, core principles. Here's what we need to be present for. And that knowing that can always change later. So we, we went back to the beginning and said, okay, it's time to do another check-in. What is that? What, what does that mean? Um, and, and now, so, so we also then got sick, horribly sick this weekend. Like I think everyone across the nation, uh, whatever the illness is that's going around, I'm so sorry if you've gotten it. Um, now it's, okay, here's our income goal. How do we restructure what we're doing? Do we, do we restructure any clients? And right now it's a no. I think we're, I think we like the clients that we have for the most part. So maybe it's a no. Um, we're still discussing it because I've still got a question, but, but it's, what is that? And I, I reverse engineered it. I said, we're not going to discuss the what we're offering or the how I want to discuss the process because we know the income goal. We know how much time we have available. We know what task we want to be doing. We already know what task we don't want to be doing. And so I'm reverse engineering it down to, okay, how do we craft what we're saying we, we do? How do we market that? What are we articulating in the marketing messages? But I want to know everything else first. So I, I completely turned it on its head. I don't want to know the product first product being bookkeeping, right? But like, I don't want to know that. I want to reverse engineer it down because maybe you just do cleanups, right? Maybe you're just a mom who wants to pick it up and put it down and you don't want the reoccurring monthly tasks of doing monthly bookkeeping, but you love doing cleanups or you love doing diagnostic reviews or you love coaching and you can, you can just do that. You can just do cleanups. You can make 30,000 a year just doing cleanups, if that's what you want, 100%. Heck, you might be able to make 30,000 with two cleanups, um, three cleanups, super, um, I wouldn't say super easy, but it could be super easy for you um, to market and do that. And then you're working once a quarter and you're doing a cleanup, um, whatever it is, like that's when we wanna get really clear on our goals really clear on what it is we're doing, really clear on our time commitment before we even start offering a service. Because if you can't do the monthly bookkeeping, that's okay. But if you wanna offer monthly bookkeeping, now, you, now you've gone through the process, you've gone through this funnel and you're gonna immediately start day one with a contractor. As Megan used to say, jumps, jump street and I never understood what she meant. <laughs> She was like, come to Jump Street. And I was, it, two months later, I was like, Megan, what are you saying? How oh, I just <laughs> asked you two months ago? But I was like, maybe I was supposed to understand this term that she was using. Um, I didn't realize it was a regional term. And, <laughs> and I'm from the South, but not herself. <laughs> so, um, you know, if I had just asked the question, instead of thinking Megan would have been like, you're an idiot. You should know what that means. Um, so I, I didn't, I didn't interpret it for whatever reason, because at that point I had now gotten to a point where my business was kind of running me. And so I was overwhelmed. And so I, I, I didn't have the energy to ask her, what does jump street mean? And then one day I finally did, I was like, I need to know what this term means. And I was like, if I had understood that two months ago, my life would be different now. Like, so I didn't know. I didn't ask the question. I didn't ask. Um, I, and I didn't What's it mean? Now, now I need to know what it means because I'm not from the South at all. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought from I start from the start, <laughs> from day one. So yep. um, she, she had been telling me for two months to hire a contractor. And because I didn't ask what the term means, I didn't fully understand that she was telling me to just freaking hire a contractor. And that would solve my problems. <laughs> um, 
she was giving me permission to do something I already wanted to do. Because when I started my business, I was like, okay, well, if I transition to bookkeeping, I'll hire a contractor. Well, the contractor I tried to hire fell through. So it just felt like, okay, well, I have to do it myself. I got in my own head. I didn't have someone checking in with me saying, hey, 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 your goal is this. But I also didn't believe enough in myself that I was allowed to do that. I didn't know it was okay. And I, I did. We, we know it's okay, guys, right? We know it's okay to do what we want. We have all of America on ads telling us, go live your best life now, go take a bubble bath, right? But when it comes to doing the work ourselves, when it comes to actually owning a business, the corporate world has told you, you have to do 100% of it yourself. Hustle culture tells you, you have to work your, your bones work your hands to the bones. Our grandparents had to work really hard, right? So a lot of us still are living from the Great Depression. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save all the soap bars. I'm gonna reuse the foil. And that's okay, I'm not saying be wasteful. I'm all for, I, I, I love glass. I love using glass. Um, a, because if you cut up fruit, so I have toddlers, if you cut up fruit and put it in like a mason jar and put it in the fridge instead of like a bowl or leave it in the like plastic thing, it lasts so much longer. So there's a, someone like looked at my fridge and they're like, why would you do it? They thought it was just like this trendy, like Pinterest thing. And I'm like, because I have kids that love strawberries and some days they don't want to eat them, but four days from now they'll want them. And if I leave them in the plastic container, they'll be dead. So, yeah, so it's saving money, but I'm not trying to be frugal. It's just, I have to do it once. Okay, I'm probably trying to be frugal, but um, not entirely. <laughs> like I'm all for buying more strawberries, but I don't have to because I just naturally do something. I've given myself permission and glass jars look pretty. I've given myself permission to do the work, to put it in a glass jar to provide for my kids. Yet we don't, I, I was not giving myself permission in my business to do what I knew needed to be done to live the life I needed to be living or wanted to be living. In my case, it was a need because it wasn't just that I wanted it. I needed to, to enjoy my life. So it's not just want. For me, it was a true need to be present with my kids. It wasn't just a desire. It was, I needed that. And that kind of sounds cheesy to say, I needed to do this, but I really did for my own mental health, probably for my own emotional health, because my mom wasn't there for me. So when I say I want to be present with my kids, I really do I want to be present with my kids. Um, so with that, reverse engineer what it is you want to do, pick the offering from that. Bookkeeping, there are so many things you can do for bookkeeping. I get cleanups all the time. If you just want to do cleanups, if, if you just want to pick it up, put it down. And, and the funny thing is, as I'm, I'm saying this, I didn't think about this when I started because I had no one challenging the status quo. It was just buy this course, do this, you'll make a million dollars. That's insane. That's insane right? But with bookkeeping, like, so I had another business. I was selling like digital. Um, if, if you guys have seen me chat in Facebook, I am like a chronic entrepreneur. I love thinking about how other businesses work and reverse engineering and learning because I didn't grow up in an entrepreneurial family. No, I take the back. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I didn't grow up with businesses that worked long-term. So um, I grew up around businesses, um, selling stuff, hustling, things like that, but just different. I, I didn't, I don't know how to do it because I grew up with it. I was not taught how to do it. So I'm always like, how do you make money? <laughs> I'm intrigued by how people make money um, to probably a very just curious nature. And so with that, um, I was doing digital prints on Teachers Pay Teachers. I still have the store. Every time I see a cell come through, I'm like, 
if I only had more time. Bookkeeping is so much more profitable if I do the math. So I continued to do bookkeeping, but I didn't, the reason I liked it was I told my husband, I can pick it up, put it down. But because of my corporate world, my corporate training with month end, I knew 100%. I couldn't put, pick it up and put it down because every, you're always closing something. There's always something to close. There's always something to reconcile. There's always something to be entered into the books, right? If I had taken this approach then, if I'd given myself permission to really challenge the status quo, which is really funny because I always challenge the status quo, I could have just done cleanups and I could pick it up, take on a job, go market for a job, put it down as soon as it's over, right? Like, how revolutionary. You don't have to do something you don't want to do. Um, with that said, um, well, actually, let's pause. Do you guys have any questions? Is there anything that you're like, yes, but yes, but you're neglecting this this area of my life. I can't possibly do what you're saying. Or are you like 100% that gives me ideas to, to move forward? Take your time. I wasn't on their whole thing, so I'm not sure what you totally <laughs> talked <You're> about. <laughs> um, but I've done a lot of contracting and I don't know if it's the fear of totally stepping out or what. Have any of you had that issue? The fear uh, of taking on the clients. Getting the clients, even though I've done discovery calls and I do great talking to them and everything, but actually like getting them going and making them your client, um, whole different story. <laughs> so I was curious yeah. how you might get through that part. Most definitely. So I had no bookkeeping experience whatsoever whenever I started my business. Um, so fear was huge for me. Um, and I mean, still there's clients that I'm like, do I really know how to do that or whatever? But um, I think the biggest thing for me um, in the beginning and even still now is doing like listening to whether it's audiobooks or YouTube videos and stuff like that, that just get you pumped up, realize like, Hey, you just need to have the confidence in yourself to go out and do this. And then also knowing that you have people in your corner or, you know, people that could help you and things like that, because like, I know for me, I know I'm not going to give a client bad books. Like I'm going to do whatever I can, <laughs> even from the beginning, just because that's my work ethic. Um, to make sure that it's correct, that I fully understand. I know they're getting everything they need. So like, does that mean like, hey, I'm going to get on YouTube and watch this video and make sure I did it correctly? Does that mean I'm going to find somebody to hop on a call with me and make sure, look at it and review it? Like whatever that meant for me at that time or currently or whatever, um, like doing those things. And also like the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, because you, now you're seeing, Hey, I re it's really not as bad as I thought. I really can handle this. Um, I can take care of them. Uh, so a lot of times it's just like us getting in our own way, like your doubts and stuff like that. So I think the biggest thing, like when, when you start having those, like stop and think about it, like, what are you scared of? on taking on that client is it you're afraid you're not going to do the work is it a, like and how can you stop that or make that situation better so is it because you don't know the work okay well how can you find out how to do it sign up for a one-to-one -one, have somebody hop on a call with you buy a course because it's going to teach you how to do bookkeeping for that particular thing get on youtube find out how to do it and whatever that is for your particular situation um or is it, you're just, you said you were confident, but somebody else might not be confident hopping on the sales call. Maybe it's getting some sales training or uh, brushing up on that type of stuff. Cause it's going to be something different for everybody on exactly what you're afraid of to hold you back from that piece. I guess we just have to realize that we have all those resources that I just need to go do. You do. <laughs> yeah. You definitely have all those resources. And yeah, that's hard to, hard in the beginning to realize that, that you do. And so, and just like we were talking before, sometimes it's overwhelming because there are so many resources and stuff like that. But um, like Sherry and I like reach out to us and, hey, I have this issue. What should I do to 
or post in the group even um, to like, where do I find a resource to help with this or whatever. Okay. Thanks for answering that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's anytime that there's a fear, it's it's based in so fear is an interesting creature. Um, it often comes up because you have a question that you need just need to go answer. So how am I going to onboard them? Okay, well, what does my onboarding process look like? Well, what if they're rude to me? Okay, what is your standard for how clients? or allowed to interact with you. Um, maybe I need to go ahead and have a template ready for <laughs> responding with, I, I won't, you know, maybe I need to watch a YouTube video. How do you respond to rude clients? How do I disengage with a client if they're gonna be- Chat rude? GPT. <laughs> <laughs> How to professionally respond to- <laughs> I had a, it's funny. I had a client this morning tell me, who's like, Hey, do you know what that is? And I was like, yeah. And he said, um, he was talking to a client of his at one time and they were like, Oh yeah, you were rude to me. And he was like, I didn't really feel like I was rude to, to them. So I typed in chat GPT, um, type an email to apologize for being rude to a client. <laughs> and like, it just did this whole thing for him. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think fear is just based in this unknown. Um, but it's it's interesting. It's not just the unknown. It's the future outcomes we think are going to happen, which is typically based in unreality. Because we don't know. We don't know that the client's going to be rude to us. We don't know that the client's going to disengage. We are writing into the future what we want the outcome to be. And we're choosing to do so negatively. Is often what what happens with fear. Um, yeah, <laughs> Melinda, ChatGPT has definitely come in handy. I like it. I like it for wordsmithing. Um, sometimes I get frustrated with it. I'm like, this is not regenerate response. No, make this sound more authoritative. No, make this sound more perfect. No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> so I have to like, <laughs> go down this this rabbit hole. But if I do it well. I think I had like 10 to 15 attempts on something I was working on, but with every rendition, I got better at being like, oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, I have this idea. Okay. Okay. And then finally, like I got this like really awesome paragraph or whatever I was looking for, um, or like, I think it was a Facebook post, but it was, part, it, it took some work to get chat gp to do it but i i really could not i was like i do not know how i want to write this and i just it was easier to just put it into chat gpt i was also sitting on the couch it was late at night i think i was holding a baby getting them to sleep and so i was on my phone so it wasn't like i was like i'm sure i could have just typed but it was mindless creation of a facebook post <laughs> kind of mindless i don't know it was fun for those five minutes. Um, with that said, we do have, um, we always want to help you refine your business. If there's a way that we can solve a problem, we want to do that. Feel free to get with us on a one-to-one, -one, get with one of the coaches. Um, Abby is really great with SOPs. If you're stuck in your business because you don't have processes and procedures and you're worried about hiring a contractor, she's fantastic with it. If you're really bad at setting boundaries with clients, go talk to Bonnie, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so coaches all have their strengths. Um, they are on the Calendly. So when you book a one-to-one, -one, you'll get like a routing form on Calendly that tells you what the each coach is strong with. Um, so feel free to utilize them from bookkeeping, advanced bookkeeping, down to how your business runs. We don't want to leave you hanging on the business side. It matters. Your sanity matters with running your business. Um, Megan also pushed us to, sorry, May 1st. We are doing a four-week success plan with you guys that you guys are welcome to join um, where we want to tackle just this with you. Um, we want to get into your business and say, what does it look like to revolutionize it? 
So we're starting with goals. We want to get really clear on that. So you can even start thinking uh, upside down, reverse engineering it. We're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk about sales, how we're going to approach lead gen for your unique business. Not everybody wants to be on Facebook. Some people don't want to do in-person networking. Some people thrive at it. Some people thrive at Facebook. Let's figure out the plan that works for you. And then let's talk through those systems and operations. And what's week four? I forget what week four is. I don't have it up. I think it was, was that the budget? Week four, analyze and improve profitability. Finances. So um, we want to make sure you guys are quoting. Um, it's actually fis fiscally responsible to quote well. So that you're paying yourself, you're supporting your family, you're supporting your financial goals. And again, you're saying, if you've got 50, $100 clients, I can tell you, you're not going to enjoy the business. It's not going to be as sustainable. Um, it's going to be a lot to manage unless they never talk to you and you're doing them all quarterly and they're not all due on the same like day. Maybe actually don't let me tell you what you can and can't do. <laughs> Take that back. If you want $1,500 clients and that's living your best life now, I'm going to help you figure out the processes to live your best life now, actually, 100%. Don't let me tell you. I take that entire sentence back. Um, because maybe you have a contractor who thrives on doing that. There's a tons of ways we can actually make that work right there. So um, whatever, whatever it looks like for you, if you're like, I can land clients at $150 all day long every day, and that's what you want to do because you have... The framework to do it or we can put the framework in to do it let's go do it let's go do it um a hundred percent so um megan do you have the link to the support yep i just put it in the i put it in facebook and in chat here so that starts may 1st the door so monday may 1st are they closing may 1st or are they closing they can they enroll monday morning they want to yeah, we can do. Yeah, we could do Monday morning. Okay. So uh, it's just going to be important to like we're closing the doors so everybody's on the same page as we're doing everything. Yep. Oh, we'll offer it again too. Um, so if you really can't get into it this time, I would I would try to still address this for your business because it matters for your long term success. Um, whether you do it with us or you do it your own at your own pace on your own, um, reverse engineer that process. Think about all the systems in your business. Um, at least go look at what we're covering and check those off for your business. Make sure you're you're doing all of those. But we would love to have you join. Um, we would love to peel back your business and and get you either back on track to where you wanted to be or figure out where you need to be going forward to, to hit those five-year goals um, or just tomorrow's goals. If you have a goal for six months from now, um, let's get laser focused and, and hit that one out of the park. So, yep. Megan, anything else on that? I have a quick think question. So. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Nice to see you guys. You too. Um, um, hang on one second. I'm on a call. I know. Sorry. Um, I had a quick question as far as, uh, so we can utilize you guys for one-on-ones or is this, is your group like a sign-up thing or like no, a um, monthly cost or? We have, we have both options um, currently. So if you want it, we do have a, a monthly program. If you wanted to sign up monthly, you get one-to-ones with that monthly program. Or if you just need it to purchase one-to-ones individually, we have that option as well. Because sometimes you run into a bookkeeping problem and it's a one-off thing and that's all you need help with. So we have okay. those options. And then um, we just all of that's on the website. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to check that in further. So, um, yeah. cause I think I do need an, um, a little bit of help. I have my first client and- Congratulations. Um, thank you. But I'm just 
nervous. I just want to start it correctly because I really haven't. She signed me up on her QuickBook online, but I'm, I haven't opened it yet because I'm like so scared, <laughs> but I want to make sure that I do like a, a correct beginning balance as far as I just want to start right, you know, so that kind of stuff. You, it, so I can sign up and you guys can help me with that probably. Yep, oh, most definitely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Cool. Yep. Speaking of which, industry specific, real estate, if you're interested in taking on real estate investors or you have real estate investors that you want to get to know better, Chelsea is doing a webinar with CB4S tomorrow. Um, 11, 11 Central. 11 Central. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to join that, just anyone in general. Um, okay. Just a reminder that that's going on. Don't miss it if you want to be be there. If you can't watch it live, um, there will be a replay uploaded. Um, so it will all be in the same module, if you would, um, on our website. So, And she's already got some pre-recorded videos uploaded, as well as the live, which is going to be about an hour, typically. Yeah, I don't know. So just a quick question on that. I did sign up for that course. Um, awesome. Quick question for you is, um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. It's one of those days. Um, where is it going to be where you have to be like at the certain times for the certain meetings? Um, is all the training going to be just online or is there certain training or is it a com combo? Um, like what's, the, I guess, what's the kind of the um, format of the training. Are you talking about the success plan? Um, both the success plan and the real estate. Um, so the real estate is 11 a.m. Central tomorrow. It's a one hour call with her. Um, and then everything else has been pre-recorded. It will go live right now. It's on pre-order. Um, she's adding some stuff today to it. Um, it will go live first thing in the morning and there'll be a Zoom link that you can access there. And then the replay is typically uploaded in the afternoon. Um, once it finishes rendering, um, we get that uploaded typically same day. So unless there's any hiccups with the recording, which we've had happen before, but typically I think it's only happened once because of the way it got recorded. Um, there was a delay in getting it uploaded, but she's going live in our Zoom account. So it'll just be uploaded after for the success plan there are planned lives i'm pretty sure i did right yeah i don't think we set the times or anything yeah. in stone yet but yeah once a week they'll there will be a live um i think we're probably going to end up doing five um lives for this one um and then there will be a Facebook group as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have questions? I don't see anything on Facebook. If y'all do have questions, definitely feel free to reach out to us. I am happy to hop on a call with y'all if y'all want to talk about, um, like if the support group or the one-to-ones or whatever, it would be a good fit for you. Happy to do that. Um, just send me a message. Um, maybe I haven't looked at the website yet, but, um, as far as doing the one-on-ones, there's a form just like, um, Sherry was saying, like there's a form to fill out and then start there. Yeah. So it'll, you, it'll prompt you to purchase, to start with. Once you purchase, it's going to have a link. Um, you okay. click on the Calendly link. When you click on the Calendly link, it has all the coaches listed out and then it has what 
they can help like what they specialize in or whatever. So oh. like, if you don't know what coach you want to work with, but you know, it's a real estate, you'll just see who has real estate. Um, and then you just select the coach, put what issue you're having, and it'll take you to their calendar to book with them. Oh, perfect. We, Thank you. Yeah. And some of them have weekends, some have evening times during the day, morning, like all different times. So it's pretty okay. flexible. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. With yep, that, you're the link will be sent to the email that you use to sign up. You should get an email with the link. Um, I okay. Don't know if it pops up after, but I know it hits your email. So, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I don't, I don't handle that piece. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so I said that. No worries. <laughs> I, I, I just love the fact that I'm familiar with you guys and it's easy to talk to you guys. So I yeah. really appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Glad no, you got on. Yeah. I have a quick, another quick question. You guys are doing like the real estate. Um, are you guys looking in the future to do like construction? like certain courses like that, like based on some of the harder clients that are a little bit more complex? Are you looking at building those kind of courses in the future? Yeah, so they'll be webinar based, um, kind of like this one, um, like we've been doing. Um, we have a list of industries, constructions, one of them. Um, I don't have the list up in front of me. It's in um, Monday platform, but we did, we have a list of things. So this one, there's chart of accounts in there. She has gone through and that's the model that we're trying to take in to these other um, industries. It just takes a little bit of time. So if, if there's one that you're like, hey, I could use this um, sooner than later, just let us know. And we meet once a month and we start planning for the following month on what, what's the webinar gonna be. Um, I, we already have May's webinar down to two topics, I think, I don't know if I, committed yeah, to I don't think finalized yet. Um, <laughs> but then June construction could definitely be an option for June. Thank you. Yeah. And we have, um, I know right now in the bookkeeper um, blueprint at the bottom, there is suggestions. So if you're in that course and you have suggestions on things that you would like to see, um, feel free to put it there. We should probably do another. Um, we also send out emails. Um, we're incorporating an email that we ask for feedback. If you have feedback like that or things that you want to see, add it to that email. Email like It's like a Google form. Just respond to that and let us know. Um, that's where we're collecting all of that information. And we would love to, if you guys need it. So, yeah. Sherry, how can, like, I really don't know, how, how could we get, if they want to be on the email list, if they're not? They should. should we just make a post? Yeah. Or is there another way? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if there was another way or. Um, there's a couple of ways. If they download anything in Thinkific or anything from the website, any free resource, they'll be added to the, the email list um, automatically or we can do a plug oh no no on a website on the website at the bottom it says add to the new email newsletter you just put your information in okay so if you want to add yourself if you're not already getting our emails if you add yourself to that email you'll get the feed the feedback form um which we read all of them we we take it really seriously so it is kind of foundational to this But yeah, so bottom of the homepage, if you would like to receive. Yeah, I see it now that you said that. <laughs> but I, really yeah, like it. I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> I know, I was like, I know there's got to be a way, but yeah, it's there. So, um, I try to do stuff in its entirety, but I don't always get there. Um, well, thank you guys for showing up. We enjoy talking to you guys on these Thursday lives. Um, so we, we appreciate you guys showing up. Hopefully these calls help you, um, grow your business more efficiently. Yep. Thank you. Bye guys. You're welcome. Bye. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. You too.